Hello everybody and welcome to the Showcast, a series of candid conversations from film festivals and film markets everywhere, brought to you by the Film Verdict and hosted by yours truly, Matt Mikucci. Our Showcast coverage of the 2023 San Sebastian International Film Festival in Spain continues with a conversation about one of the most talked about films from the festival's official selection, The Successor. We're joined by its director, Xavier Legrand, already an award winner at the 2017 Venice Film Festival with Custody and the successor's lead actor, Marc-André Grondin. The film explores a fashion designer's life unraveling after his estranged father's death. In this episode of the Showcast, we explore the film's dimension as a critique of patriarchy and explore masculinity at large, as well as Legrand's interest in flirting with genre techniques, most notably horror film conventions, to make a powerful statement. So fire up an audio teeny and listen to the audio waves as they fly through the air. This is the Showcast. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's a pleasure to meet you. Presenting the film, the successor. Uh, how are you guys? <laughs> bah oui, ça va super. <laughs> non, non, je suis très, on est très content de présenter le film. On le présente pour la première fois ce soir au public, donc on est un peu euh, fragile mais heureux. <laughs> ah, it's great, 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 great to you know to 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 be here. And, but it's the first time that we'll see the film with public this afternoon. So we're kind of. Uh, Tense, no, but a bit nervous. Yes. Let's put it that way, you know. Uh, that's uh, Xavier Le- Legrand speaking, and we've also got uh, Marc Andre here, uh, who plays uh, the lead, the protagonist in the film. And I'm certainly delighted to to meet you guys. I watched the film yesterday, and I thought it was incredibly powerful. I want to start with an icebreaker question, Xavier. What was the starting point for you to to explore this story and make this film? Ben c'est euh, un pont euh, avec mon premier film, une continuité euh, qui euh, pour explorer le patriarcat, mais je voulais aussi le, l'explorer euh, par le prisme des hommes et comment euh, justement la violence des hommes peut aussi impacter les hommes. Well, actually, it's kind of a bridge, you know, with my first film, with Custody, really linking Custody to the successor. But I also wanted it. I wanted to explore, say, if in Custody I explored violence on women. Here I wanted to explore violence created by men and what this violence did to men, to the sun. And an icebreaker question for Mark andre as well. I wanted to ask you about first finding out about the project and first connecting with the project. What was your reaction to it? I worked, uh, I shot a TV series with Denis Ménachet before uh, Jusqu'à la Garde came out. And he told me about the project. He told me about Xavier. When the movie came out, I jumped on it to watch it. And I was blown away by this movie. who's uh, a real masterpiece and performances are insane. And um, so I, I knew of, of, of Xavier because of that. And I think Xavier told, um, Denis told uh, Xavier about me or whatever. We ended up meeting and he told me about the project, but literally he told me like three lines. And uh, years later, I got the script and I didn't know what to expect. And I was just blown away. I, I finished reading and I was like, what have I just read? And then I talked to Xavier and my, you know, my first question was like, how are you going to sell this movie? How are you going to talk about this movie without talking about it? And it's going to be your trailer. And I'm like, <laughs> it's such an intense story. Um, and it's kind of a movie that takes you somewhere else. You think you're watching something, you, you think it's about something and then it's more and then it's more and then you finish the movie and you can watch it again and you discover new things. Um, it's a real artistic expression. I, I would definitely agree. I, I personally, I'm always drawn to films that explore the patriarchy and masculinity because I, I'm a man and, uh, you know, maybe that's part of it. Uh, but also, Xavier, this is a very modern story, I think. You know, do you feel like this is the right time for a film like this? And maybe you wouldn't have been able to make a film like this, you know, a few years ago? C'est intéressant comme question. Euh, je me demande si euh, il n'aurait pas été plus simple de le faire avant que maintenant. Je trouve qu'aujourd'hui, on est dans une société où euh, la nuance est beaucoup moins bienvenue. 
besoin euh, de, de prendre parti où il y a les gentils et les méchants et que le film vient questionner justement euh, que la victime euh, peut être aussi un bourreau et j'ai l'impression que c'est ça que le, le film vient titiller et c'est en ça où les réactions pourront être euh, voilà euh, assez tranchées. Well, it's an interesting question because I wonder if it wouldn't have been easier to make it years before, you know? Because right now we're living a time where people, well, society has a tendency to say, okay, it's good or it's bad, it's black and it's white, you know? There's no in-between, there's no nuance, you know? So maybe years before it would have been easier when people were more willing not to take such size, but nowadays, mm, okay, he's the bad guy, you know? He's the good guy, but then he's also a bad guy. And people don't understand that, how you can have both inside you. Uh, this is very interesting because uh, before we started recording, I uh, was speaking with Marc André and I told him, you know, maybe films play it too safe sometimes when they explore th these themes. Uh, do you agree with that? I, I also said, if you want to say something, say it. Oui, oui, je suis assez d'accord avec ça et c'est vrai que euh, encore une fois, euh, c'est un autre point avec mon premier film mais je donne en fait à voir ce qu'on ne veut pas voir. Et je crois que ben quand on décide de faire ça, il faut aller jusqu'au bout, il faut être assez radical. Yeah, I agree to, uh, really and as I said before, it's a bridge with my other, you know, with my other my previous film because here what I do is I show what people don't want to see. And when you do that, you better go to the end. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Marc André, I, I want to ask you when you work on a project like this, again, speaking of masculinity, I, are you kind of uh, encouraged or inspired to think about your own relationship with masculinity and also what masculinity means within the patriarchal order? Y yes and no. I mean, not specifically throughout work, but I think in the past 10 years, especially in the past, especially in the past five years, um, I think men have been having a wake up call. Um, you know, I, I think kids that are growing up now that are going to school are more exposed to what relationships should be and how a man should behave and not just towards women, towards men also. I think there's a, a bit more fluidity between genres in the younger generations. I, I mean, I can't project myself that much into the story because I, I mean, I'm, I tend to say that I come from a very boring, you know, uh, house. I mean, you, we loved each other. It was fine. My parents weren't fucked up. I had a great relationship. My father passed away and I'm in peace because I had a great relationship with him. I don't regret anything. It's, it's very boring for an actor because you, you kind of want to be, have like a really strong backstory yeah. so you can dive into it to, to act after. But, uh, it took me years before I could like, cry and let go because I just didn't live anything bad. I, do you think of something bad that happened in your life when you, you do those scenes? I've never lived something that bad. I know. But, um, do but you I think that makes you a better actor? I don't think so. <laughs> like a, like a blank canvas. No, because every time I see, you know, just tormented actors, I'm like, they're real actors. I'm, I'm not, I just know how to do this. But, uh, um, but that being said, I think it's, it's a very important discussion to have for men and, but between men. I think, uh, it's one thing to have conversations with, with girls, uh, regarding how the, the, the relationship between women and, and, and men, but, I've had in the past couple of years conversations between friends, boys, talking about how we were out of touch, how we we took certain things for granted, and um, I think we we see things throughout a different prison now. And um, I want to say that we talk about it too much, but no, but we shouldn't be talking about it. It shouldn't be an issue, but it is, and we need to talk about it until it's not an issue. But even now, I mean, I, 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 I see men and the power we give to men every day, every day. Um, but it, it, you say it's an issue, but is it also a trap? Uh, I don't know exactly if it's a trap, but um, I think we we need to evolve 
as human beings, we're not hunters and gatherers, and it's not. It's we don't have. We kind of try to uh, duplicate what we were ten thousand years ago, uh, but it's you know society is different. We as human beings were were somewhere else, and I mean that's a very philosoph philosophical and biological conversation. <laughs> but um, but I think it's a good thing. I don't think it's necessarily a trap. I think uh, I think uh, we were really bad towards ourselves uh, and towards each other for many years and we still are and i think we i think we need to evolve into better beings and taking care of each other and respecting each other and i don't think right now i i, I agree with xavier right now it's the conversation is always polarized it's it's um I'm, i don't want to sound old and blame it on facebook but it's it, we live in a in an era where it's thumbs up or thumbs down And when we don't agree, it's go fuck yourself. You're wrong. It's like we're, we're trying to replicate religion and how we have the truth and you're going to go to hell. We don't talk. We don't look at each other and respect each other. Uh, super peace. We just light a joint and talk about it. <laughs> exactly. do, do you have any thoughts on maybe uh, masculinity and the patriarchy being also a trap for, for men? And if I can add to that, uh, also... Of course, the film Father and Son is an important element. So how does that complicate things? Oui, is it a pattern that repeats itself? Je reste euh, assez convaincu que la violence est un choix et que c'est pas parce que... Enfin, je ne crois pas l'hérédité. Pour prendre, par exemple, l'inceste, euh, les, les auteurs d'inceste, souvent, on dit qu'ils ont été victimes d'inceste. Oui, certains, mais quelquefois non et... Les victimes d'inceste ne sont pas forcément auteurs d'inceste. Donc c'est quelque chose qu'on choisit, c'est pas quelque chose qui se transmet. Donc je ne pense pas que ce soit un, un piège dans le sens où on a le choix. Voilà. I firmly believe that violence is not hereditary. Hmm. It's a choice, which is very different. You can choose to be violent or not. It's often said that yes, violence is hereditary. You know, one example is okay. Very often, a man who will commit incest said, oh, yes, but I had incest committed on me, you know, or something like that. I don't believe that because a lot of people have been, uh, were born over that an incestuous relationship where even, you know, had, were raped when they were, when they were young, but they do not rape them afterwards when they grow up. It's not hereditary. It's a choice. So I would say, no, masculinity and patriarchy is not a trap. Or not a trap. Sorry. <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, so let's talk about style a little bit, um, because first of all, this film takes place in a in a glamorous kind of world. But then also, the film itself has moments where where glamour can kind of kind of enters the style before it becomes problematic. So, what is it that fascinated you about this the particular setting of the movie? Parce qu'il était important de comme on raconte la chute de quelqu'un, il fallait que cette chute soit vertigineuse. Je voulais pas qu'il tombe du deuxième étage, mais du vingtième. Donc, euh, à partir du moment où je voulais aller dans l'obscurité la plus, la plus noire, il fallait que je commence dans, euh, euh, la, la blancheur, le, le, la beauté. Et je trouvais que le, le monde de la mode permettait ça aussi parce que c'est un, un, un statut pour le personnage qui fait que, euh, il ne peut supporter aucune éclaboussure. As it's the story of a fall, the fall of a man, I didn't want him to fall from the second floor. I wanted him to fall from the 20th floor, you know, the highest possible, right? In order to do that, in order to take him to the deepest, the most somber, the dark, the dark of the dark, he had to start in something that was white, full of light, colorful, you know, absolutely. And I thought that fashion really was the perfect setting for that, you know, to put him to, to start with and then have him fall. We cannot say anymore, you know, but have him fall throughout the film. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot in this film that we can't talk about. <laughs> so I'm trying to be careful here. But there's also a lot uh, more that I would like to ask. We're running out of time, unfortunately. But I, I did want to ask you, uh, Xavier, about how you interact with genre. Uh, in this movie, because there are moments where you seem to kind of flirt with 
genre conventions maybe a little bit or is it just my impression mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oui oui bah c'est c'est un quelque chose au cinéma que j'aime bien je l'avais déjà aussi fait dans jusqu'à la garde où j'aborde le thriller là on on peut dire qu'on flirte avec même le film d'épouvante et, euh, et je trouve ça toujours bien parce que c'est ça donne comme une sorte de, quelque chose de familier pour le spectateur et puis finalement après on va le tordre pour l'amener complètement autre part vrai que par exemple on je révèle un peu, mais il y a une histoire de sous-sol. Le sous-sol, c'est un décor qu'on a déjà vu dans plein de films d'horreur, que ce soit Psychose ou Misery. Et effectivement, on, on, on pense qu'on va aller dans quelque chose de presque spectaculaire ou même de fantastique. Et en fait, ce qui est terrible, c'est qu'on va dans une réalité qui est encore plus épouvantable. Voilà. Yes, no, no, I agree, really. It's the way it is, you know. But it's something that I already did with my previous film, you know, with Custody. I, there, I flirted with the thriller. Here, let's say I take a step farther and I re, I don't really go deeply into the horror genre, but I'm nearly there, you know. So, okay. But it's something I think I like because it's something that's familiar for the spectator, for the public. You know, he finds, public will find things that he's familiar with, you know, and then that's what I like, you know, you take the public up to a certain point and then you kind of twist the thing, you know, to take him somewhere else, you know. Of course, well, I shall reveal a little something, but not really anything. That, for example, uh, the basement. The basement is something that's typical of horror movies, right? You've got it in psychosis, 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 misery, you know, the film, all that. But here, psycho, I guess. Psycho, sorry, psycho in English, sorry. <laughs> yes, psycho, misery, you know. But here, so, okay, so we go into this basement and you thought, oh my God, it's going to be awful. But no, we go plaf, back in reality. You know, the thing, to, to, to have a surprise, you know, to bring the spectator through a way of bringing back to reality, something, a reality that's even more awful than the most awful horror film. <laughs> They're going to kick me out, so I have to stop it here. But amazing translation, right? I have to say, <laughs> some of the best ever. <laughs> so much passion. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. It's been Thanks a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed my conversation about The Successor, and I would also like to thank Mathilde Grange for her excellent translation. As for us, Cinephile, we will return with more coverage from the 2023 San Sebastian International Film Festival. But while you're at it, why not check out more of our Showcast episodes currently available? Candid conversations from film festivals and film markets everywhere, guaranteed for all, courtesy of The Film Verdict. Till the next time, this is Matt Makuchi signing off. See you soon. Mm -hmm.